Hi everyone, welcome to this Firebase Fundamentals video where I'll show you how to get up and running quickly with Firebase authentication in your web application. We are going to use the new version of the Firebase JavaScript SDK and as David mentioned in his video, version 9 of our JavaScript SDK makes use of tree shaking to remove all the stuff you don't need. This is particularly useful for Firebase authentication. You rarely want to use all of the authentication providers in your app, so with v9, tree shaking can remove all providers you don't need, resulting in a much smaller download size of your app. So in this video, I'm assuming that you've already gotten started with the initial Firebase setup using something like Webpack or Rollup in a web application as described in David's video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Make sure you've watched that one first before continuing. All right, let's take a look at the code for this project. So I've gone ahead and created an empty starter project, pretty much what David had at the end of his video. I have a very simple HTML file which contains the code for a couple of UIs I'm going to use to log in my app. Over here in index.js, I have my code, which gets compiled and bundled up with Webpack. I've configured Webpack to watch my source folder, and I've also installed HTML Webpack plugin. This will copy my index HTML file and add a script tag to load my bundled code. I'll go ahead and run mpx Webpack to start Webpack. Once it's finished, we can see the result in the dist folder. And then in a new shell, I'll run Firebase serve dash dash only hosting to serve the contents of the dist folder on my local machine. Once the local server is up and running, it will show a message saying that it runs on port 5000 on localhost. I can then command click on the link to open it in my browser and voila, there's my page. To check everything is working as expected, let me make a small change to index.html and hit save. In the Webpack output, we can see that it's bundling my project, so let me hit refresh in the browser to reload the page. OK, let's get coding. First, let's go to index.js and take a look at what we've got so far. At the top of the file, I've got the imports for my CSS styles and some UI elements from this other JavaScript file, ui.js. This mostly contains code to connect to the UI elements of my little application. To keep things simple, I'm not using any framework. This is all just plain JavaScript and straight up DOM coding. Next, I import initialize app and call this function to initialize Firebase using this configuration object. Now, if you remember what David said in his video, instead of using a namespace based approach, in v9 of the Firebase SDK for JavaScript, we use a functional approach. So what this means is that you need to hold on to the Firebase instance and pass it to the initialization function of the Firebase service you want to use. The functions of all the Firebase services follow the same approach. Their first parameter requires a reference to the service they operate on, so you need to hold on to that service reference and pass it in to any Firebase function you call. You can think of it a bit like a chain. You pass the result of one call into the next call. Before you can use Firebase auth, you need to import and initialize it. To use any of Firebase's services, you call a function that is named get and then the name of the Firebase service you want to use. So get auth for Firebase auth, get Firestore for Firestore, and so on. And the name of the module to import from follows the same naming scheme. So let me add the import for get auth up here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to import connect auth emulator and sign it with email and password as well, because these will be the functions I'm going to use later. Next, I can initialize Firebase auth by calling get auth and pass in the Firebase app instance. I'll keep the auth instance around since I'm going to need it a couple of times. The first thing I want to do after initializing Firebase auth is to connect my app to the Firebase emulator suite. You can think of the emulator suite as kind of your own personal test instance of Firebase running locally on your machine. It is perfect for development and testing, as all calls happen locally, so it is super fast. Also, and this is one thing I personally find really reassuring, 
you don't need to worry about messing up your production data. Right. So to connect Firebase Auth to the emulator, all I have to do is call connect auth emulator and provide a reference to the auth instance and the URL I want the emulator to run on. By default, this will be port 9099 on localhost. And with that, we're now ready to sign the user in. For this video, I'm going to use email and password authentication since it is super easy to set up. However, Please bear in mind that coming up with a strong password is challenging, and most people are not very good at this. But not to worry, Firebase Auth supports a bunch of other authentication providers that are even more convenient for users, such as email and link authentication, Google Sign-in, Sign-in with Apple, and more. And we will be looking at them in later episodes of this series. I'm first going to create a function that I can call when the user taps on the Login button. I'm going to call it login email password. And now I can hook it up to the click event listener of the login button on the login form. To sign the user in, I need to fetch their credentials by reading the value of the email and password input fields of the login form. And now I've got everything in place to call the sign in with email and password function. This function takes three parameters the Firebase auth instance, the email address, and the password. The return value of the function is a promise, so I can use a wait to call it and then assign the return value to a new local variable. When calling an async function using a wait, the promise will be unwrapped, so this variable is of type user credential. User credential has three attributes, and one of them is the user itself, so let's log this out to the console. Great, let's now run this. In the background, Webpack has bundled up the code, and I've got Firebase hosting running locally to serve up my app on port 5000, so I can just switch over to my browser and hit refresh to run the latest version of my app. So let me try logging in as me at awesomekittens.test with a password of test1234. But when I tap the login button, the browser console shows an error. Error connection refused. Why is that? So if you remember, right at the beginning, after I set up Firebase Auth, I called connect auth emulator and instructed it to connect to port 1999 on localhost. But I didn't start the emulator. And this is why we get this error message. It's an easy mistake to make, but it's easy to fix. So let me start the emulator by running Firebase emulators colon start dash dash only auth from the project folder. This will run just the Firebase authentication emulator. And now my app should be able to communicate with the emulator suite. Let me try logging in with the same credentials. And now when I tap on the login button, I get another error. This time it's auth user not found. And that is because my Firebase project doesn't have a user with that email address. So one way to fix this is to create a new account using the Firebase console. Here in the console for the Firebase auth emulator, I can see that there aren't any users for this project yet. So I'll tap the Add User button to open a dialog that lets me enter the details for a new user account, such as their display name, a photo URL, and a bunch of other options. So let me fill in the email and password fields. Me at awesomekittens.test and test1234. One thing to note is that I don't actually own this email address. The .test top-level domain is just for testing, so this email is unverified. If you're considering using email and password sign-in, you should definitely implement an email verification flow to make sure users actually own the email address they provided. You can use the default verification flow from your client, or you can customize it using the admin SDK. Another option is to use email and link authentication, or one of the OAuth2 providers Firebase supports. Okay. Once I create the user account, I can see the user in the console along with their UID. The UID is a user ID that Firebase assigns to the user. 
This ID is guaranteed to be unique no matter how they sign in. So now that I've created a user account, I can try signing in again. And since I used console.log to print the user details onto the console, I can now see the user details. For example, here is their email address and there is the UID. If I don't provide the correct password when signing in, Firebase Auth will return an error, Auth wrong password. So before I show you how to create a new user account using code, let me display this error on the UI to make this a better user experience. To do this, I'm going to wrap the call to sign in with email and password in a try catch block. And then inside the catch block, I'll print the error to the console. I'll also send it to the show login error function that I defined in ui.js. This function will check if the error code equals to auth error codes invalid password and will return a human readable error message. Let me quickly show what this looks like in the browser. So when I try signing in with the wrong password, I will now get an error message. That's so much more user-friendly than displaying the error in the console. OK, so I created a user account using the Firebase console, but in a real application, you'll want to allow users to sign up themselves. So let me show you how to create a new user account using code. I'll first create an empty function named createAccount and hook it up to the click handler of the Sign Up button. To create a new user account, I can use the createUserWithEmailAndPassword function. Let me first import this function up here. Now, the create user with email and password function has the same parameters as sign in with email and password. So I can go ahead and copy the code I wrote for the login button and then paste it into the create account function. Now, back down in create account, I can replace this call with create user with email and password. Note how the code completion hover shows me the documentation for this function. And sure enough, I can see that it does indeed expect the same three parameters of email and password. I'd also like to call out that this function will not only create the user account, but will also log in that particular user, which is exactly what I want in this case. Perfect. So I'll take this one then. And now let's see this in action. This time, I'll enter an email that is not yet in the system you at awesomekittens.test and a password. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I tap the sign up button, I can see that I'm now signed in as you at awesomekittens.test over here in the console. However, the UI doesn't reflect that I'm signed in. So the user doesn't get any feedback, which is a pretty terrible UX. So in the next step, I'll show you how to update the UI according to the authentication state. To update the UI according to the authentication state, we can make use of the on-off state change listener. This method allows us to register a closure that will be called whenever the authentication state changes, for example, when the user signs in or logs out. The first thing is to add on-off state change to the list of imports. Now, let me create a function that I can call as soon as the UI is loaded. I'll call it monitor auth state. Inside, I'm going to call on auth state changed, which takes a closure that will receive two parameters the auth object and a user instance. The user parameter can either contain a JavaScript object, which represents the currently signed in user, or nil, which means the user has signed out. So if the user has signed in, I want to hide the login form and show the application window instead. And if the user is nil, which means they are signed out, I want to show the login form and hide the application window instead. And now when I refresh the browser, the application window is hidden and I can only see the login form. When I sign in using one of the accounts I created earlier, the login form disappears and the application window appears instead, showing me some details about the user. Perfect, we're almost done.
Finally, let's take a look at how to log out. Logging out is probably the simplest function call in Firebase Auth. Again, let me import the function first and then implement a simple function and connect it to the logout button. Like all other Firebase auth functions, signout is an async function, which is why we call it using await. And now, back in the browser, I can log out of the application, and thanks to the authentication state listener I implemented earlier, the UI updates automatically and displays the login form again. And with this, we're at the end of this quick introduction to Firebase authentication on the web using v9 of the Firebase JavaScript SDK. A couple of things to keep in mind before I let you go. One, keep in mind that picking a strong password is challenging, so consider using an authentication mechanism that doesn't require your users to deal with passwords at all. For example, email and link authentication works great doesn't use any passwords and has the added benefit of verifying the user's email address as part of the signup flow. Two, use the Firebase emulator suite to develop locally and speed up your development cycles. As you saw in this video, it's easy to connect your project to the emulators, literally just one line of code, and you don't have to worry about messing up your production data by accident. And finally, Check out all the other authentication providers such as Google Sign-in, Facebook Login, or Sign-in with Apple. What's really cool about them is that users who are already using one of these providers can sign into your app with just one tap. It really doesn't get any easier than that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon on another episode of Firebase Fundamentals.